what is up everybody crypto noah back with another video trying to bring you the best content on how you can generate passive income through yield firming on, on blue chip crypto assets so you can have more to sell ahead of the next bull market today we're going to be reviewing the camelot decentralized exchange there are decks on arbitrum i'm not sure if they're the largest one well i know they're not because uniswap's on Ar arbitrum they're one of the largest dexes on arbitrum so per usual we're going to go through the docs we're going to look at some of their high paying pools and their features uh, what makes them different we're going to do a platform walkthrough and at the end i'm going to tell you if i would use camelot or not and why so before we get started i do have to say this video should not be taken as financial advice please consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions this video is for your education purposes only all right so without further ado let's get into camelot all right so here we are on DeFi llama and if we scroll down to number 17 you can see camelot is right there they have a tvl of 116 million if the dex doesn't have at least 100 million uh, i probably won't you know go on it unless i'm trying to do something early like i did here with min swap on uh cardano but that's for another video and another day so if we click on it you can see all the metrics the tvl the market cap they do have a governance token which we're going to talk about but i'm not promoting or dispromoting that you buy the token i just want to talk about the yield farming so let's get into the docs all right so here we are this is the overview it talks about their objective which is a bunch of rah rah um one thing that they're trying to set themselves apart with is a launch pad and before we even go into this you know it makes sense for a decentralized exchange to want a launch pad because you want projects to launch their tokens on there because they're not the first one with the launch pad but they're trying to go about it in a different way they're trying to solidify themselves as the go-to launch pad for Arbitrum projects, their most promising protocols, as it says here. And Camelot itself even launched through the launch pad. Like they launched through their own launch pad. So they see it as a viable option for teams to be able to raise funds. All right, feature rich AMM. So they pretty much went through the same evolution that all DEXs went through. They had regular AMM, now they have concentrated liquidity. And then they're also introducing dynamic directional fees for their trading pairs. It allows different fees to be set for each pool and also have different fees depending on the direction of the swap via buying or selling. So they offer some cool customization there. Let's talk about their permissionlessness. They say they firm, we firmly believe that offering to protocols the right to directly interact with Camelot without any consent nor intervention from the team is essential and that this should be the absolute standard for any AMM pretty much. And it says through our permissionless nitro pools, projects have full control on their incentives and have extremely flexible options to build the exact type of liquidity they need to thrive. While its protocols will have full control to incentivize and manage their liquidity how they like, Camelot will additionally provide a tailored strategy to help achieve their goals. That's pretty cool. And they're saying their vision is to is for the launch pad to transform into a fully permissionless platform. And the goal of that is to empower all projects with an equal opportunity to bootstrap their token, launch, and their liquidity. And last one on the overview, talk about long-term sustainability. So it says Camelot is based on a dual token system. This isn't nothing new, consisting of the native liquid grail token and its escrow version, xgrail. It's a non-transferable governance token with both being used as farming rewards. And it says most emissions are distributed in Exegrail, providing a high level of control on the supply flow on the market. This allows them to create a healthy balance between attractive incentives to grow initial liquidity, while it's ensuring that we are preparing for the long-term health of the protocol. They have a supply hard cap and carefully crafted emissions and deflationary mechanisms to try to you know, keep the token price from dropping 50%, I guess. <laughs> And they have like a lot of stuff here. They got an Arbitrum guide. They got tutorials for literally everything, literally everything, stake positions, nitro pools, grail plugins. Okay, let's talk about boosting the farming reward. So it says the SP NFT, which is, I think this is a layer on top of grail. So it's almost like the LP token is NFT can be boosted through time locking or yield boosting. The boosts are based on multipliers. The max total multipli multiplier that can be achieved is a 3X. So it says liquidity provider trading fees and nitro pool rewards won't be affected by either of the boosts. Only existing farming emissions APR will be boosted. So it says, what is the impact of multipliers on farming incentives? So 2X multiplier gives you 100% boost. So if your APR is 100%, you get 200%, I'm, I'm guessing. And a 3x gets you a 200% boost. So for time locking, it says it's possible to specify a lock duration when creating an SP NFT or lock it directly in the position uh, management panel 
after the SP NFT was already created. And it says by setting a six month lock, the maximum boost from time locking can be achieved, but any number of days can be set. And they give you directions on how to do all that stuff here. Pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. And if you, if you want a video on how to boost the yield, you can go here and play it and it'll play like literally right on, right on the website, which is pretty cool. So let's talk about the launch pad here. So it says the launch pads are open to everyone but they're structured to prioritize X grill holders and they should be. It says, however, under certain circumstances, they might become accessible to the general public. So they give you directions on the fair launch model and everything. They haven't had a launch since I think August of 2023, but we have been in a bear market in some areas, I guess. So I wouldn't be surprised if this picked up in the bull market. You know, projects usually want to launch a token when they know it's hype in the market so they can make money. And now let's cover the token distribution. Like I said, I'm not advocating that you buy the token. I'm not advocating against it as well. Yeah, you see 22% went to liquidity mining. And the core contributors got 20%. And then you can see all the other percentages here. It talks about how they launch. And then this is they have a three-year supply release schedule. And I believe they launched in 2022. So all the tokens seem like they should be getting unlocked here probably sometime this year. But like I said... I am not buying any Grail tokens. There are other tokens that I am more bullish on. And lastly, we always say security is of the utmost importance. So you want to make sure projects are being audited. Now, they do have audits. They do look good, but they only have two of them. And there's been projects that's gotten hacked with more audits. So I would say be a little careful. Normally, a project of this caliber will have more audits. But, you know, maybe theirs were just like they were just really confident in uh how theirs came back. I already came through and went through this, so I encourage you to do the same. And they resolved most of the things that were found, especially the high and the medium. That's something you really want to look at. A couple ones they didn't resolve here, some they didn't resolve here. But like I said, this is old. They could have resolved it by now and just not got another audit because they didn't want to pay for it. Who knows? All right, so now that we've covered all the docs, let's do a platform walkthrough. And at the end, I will tell you if I would use Camelot or not and why. All right, so here we are on the website, pretty much just a one pager here. You click launch, and now let's kind of start getting into the nitty gritty. So they have a pretty simple UI. This is, uh, oh, they have an aggregator too. So you get like the lowest price across Arbitrum, it sounds like. All right, now you got trade. Let's look at liquidity. This is where you go to create your own pool. Let's look at the pools they have already. And we want to sort by APR. All right, Pendle E, 252%. Ooh, that's that's excellent. That's actually really excellent. Let's click on that and see what it's looking like. Market maker, swap fees, okay. And then you let's see, we create position. Remember, this is concentrated liquidity, so you can do manual and pick your own range. And But you can also do full range, which I don't recommend, wide range, narrow range, or where was that, which was common, or you can do auto, which they allow you to manage on gamma. And it gives you the the APR and all of the yields down here. So you get a nitro pool because they are in a partnership with Pendle. Remember their nitro allows projects to have their own pool permissionlessly, right? So the strategy APR, farm APR, nitro APR. I made a video on gamma. They did recently get hacked. I'm sure they fixed it, but that is something to keep in mind. They also have a partnership with Steer but it looks like this one isn't live. All right, coming back here, let's keep looking through some of these. Uh, Solana USDC, 180%. Axelar USDC, 175. Gonna be making a video on that one here pretty soon, most likely. Let's see what else they got here. Link ETH, 127%. Arbitrum USDC, 105%. Kujera ETH, 104%. Do people still use Magic Internet Money Token? I wouldn't trust it. Let's see, they got 14 pages of pools here. So let me see if I can look at more per page. Yeah, Bitcoin and SV, BTC. Okay, these are all like super small TVLs now. We're getting to the dollar range here, a couple hundred bucks range, okay. Let's look at the nitro pools and these are the pools that can have a permissionless partnership. So we already looked at the Pendle one, you got GMX. These are all like gamma pools here. If you go here, you click X Grill. This is how you get X Grill. If you want to buy it, you can buy it on the Camelot Exchange. You just go to CoinGecko. You come here, get the contract address, and you can buy it. And then you will be able to use it to boost 
the yield set you in. I don't have any, so it won't show me that UI, but you can stake it here and then you can go and boost your yields, I imagine. This is where you get dividends. So it says allocate X grill here to earn a share of protocol earnings in the form of real yield. Remember you get paid out in grill or X grill. All right, so you can stake it here. Let's look at the launch pad. You can see that the last one closed on August in 2023. So it's been a while, but like I said, I do expect that to pick up in the bull market. And if we go to yield booster, I don't see anything here, but it could be because I don't have any grail. Click round table, you can see the partnerships that they have, some pretty good projects, GMX, Pendle. Of course, they put Pendle at the top. We call it Pendle weeks ago. If you listen to us and did the research, you're big in the green right now. And then they have their analytics tab where you can go and look at the projects. Analytics, you can get that on DeFi Llama though. I saw something that said calculator. Let's check that out. Mm, yeah, nothing here. All right, guys. So we went through all the pools. We went through the platform now. The question on everyone's mind, maybe not, you probably don't care. <laughs> would I use Camelot or not and why? To answer the question, I would. Have I used it? No. And will I use it? I don't know, but I would use it if that makes sense. Basically, it, it boils down to where I can find pools that offer me the highest volume to TVL ratios. That's normally Uniswap, but sometimes it's on DEXs like these where a lot of people aren't going. So it's lesser people getting a larger percentage of a pie. It does bother me that they have only had two audits and it's been a while since they had another one. It just makes me think like it's a hack waiting to happen. Like if Curve can get hacked and they went through all those audits and they have all that liquidity, it can happen to anyone. So that's the only thing where I'm like, mm, I don't know. But nothing's happened and they have been functioning. They have over 100 million in TVL, so I would use it. I'm really going to consider getting into that Pendle ETH pool. That one looked really, really good. Yeah, I like the project. You know, DEX volume and TVL is going to be small right now where we're in a bear market. But as the TVL and DeFi picks up, especially on something like Arbitrum, I wouldn't be surprised if in the bull market the TVL got to a couple hundred million or even a billion. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Grail token pumped. So with that, I like to conclude this video. If you guys want to learn how to market, make, and yield farm like a professional, click the link in the description and book a free strategy session with one of our Know It Owls team members and we'll see if our program's a good fit for you. We're helping people generate passive income and yield farming right now. And you get access to our buy and sell calls as well as my YouTube videos early, the important ones. So with that, I'd like to conclude this video. I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love every single one of you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and trade safe.